Okay, Industry 4.0 lessons learned. Um, I thought usually these kind of Industry 4.0 discussions start uh, with theories on how it should be implemented, but I thought today I would like to share with you a kind of experience that we have doing Industry 4.0 in factory. So it's actually a kind of old case because we started this project about seven years ago. But I, it's an interesting in the fact that we actually learned a lot and we're changing our concept after trying to implement Industry 4.0. So um, this is the project I'm going to talk about. It's our Mitsubishi Electric Kani factory where we are making these kind of um, electrical magnetic contactors right now. So um, the problem with this factory is a problem with everybody has right now, which is we have to make small lots and many, many, many types of products right now. In this fact, it was about, we had to make 14,000 different types of magnetic contactors right now. So um, this was a kind of issue because if you have that many types of products, then you have to change the production line every time. You have to reteach the engineers how to produce the product. So it was actually a mess and we were making some mistakes based on uh, people not doing the instructions correctly. So. We were hearing about Industry 4.0 and we have been always thinking about how we can use IDOT technology to change the factory. So we said, let's go into a full-blown Industry 4.0 factory. Um, let's kind of make massive production lines that use um, IoT technology, collecting data, robotics, and try to see how much uh, we can improve and be flexible. Um, so we installed these lines and we got good results. But at the end, right now, I think it was three years or two years ago, we actually ended up tearing down these lines. And that's the interesting thing about the story, which I'll go into detail. Uh, Industry 4.0, the first time we installed it, brought us so much. So it was a fully automatic line. So we had a barcode on the product uh, that we were going to make. So it would automatically be read by the machine and it would be started to be manufactured right now. The beautiful, beautiful thing about automation is you gather all the data. So you don't need somebody to write down the test results. All the test data is recorded and you can go back if you have a quality issue. The other beautiful thing is everything is in real time. So if we found that a product had a bad test value, we could stop the machine right at that point meaning that we didn't have any uh, no good powder products go back to the go out to the market. Plus we would have avoided um, loss because of uh, making bad parts right now. So it's beautiful that traceability, if we had a quality issue because of an engineering issue, we could go back and see which machine we made this product at this state right now. And we also did modeling, we tagged it into our demand prediction system. So it was beautiful. I hope you can see the video. Um, run let's see the quality but um one thing we also achieved about automation was improved quality so there's a, a video in start it's not working but we changed our screwing procedure from manual screwing back to like automatic screwing where we used machines to do the uh screwing of the electronic uh parts so uh, putting the screws onto the product um what I talk about result management to process management is when we we're doing manual screwing, we were only looking at the result if the screw went in good or if it went in bad. But with, if you do automated screwing, you're actually be able to manage the torque and the electrical currencies uh, that are flowing through when you do the screwing. So you can actually see a level step further by doing this automation. So that's what I say. We're not just looking at the final result if the screw went in, we're also looking at the process. And this improved the quality level extremely of our plant. So all of these good things came because we were doing automation. So this is the actual production line you see on the screen of it. So it's a pretty long line. It's about 35 meters one way, eight meters one way, and 35 meters one way. So it's actually a 70 meter line. And all the circles you see on the screen are the robots that we are using for automation. Um, it actually takes up a lot of space. You know, you see a lot of machinery on the backside of the machines. This is because we are making different products when we do production. We have to have different feeder machines for each product type we make. So it takes out a lot of space on the backside right now. So 
So it went one, it went well, you know, we're making it a very, very fast speed. It's very accurate. All the automation, we only have, you know, uh, two or two line workers basically looking after the machine. So we had great production, but we actually had a lot of issues with this production line. And the biggest issue was actually that one stop would stop, the one production stop would uh, stop the whole production line. Meaning if something got stuck, if a part could not be uh, correctly provided to the production line, then the entire line and the hundred products that are flowing through the production line would stop. So this was a big issue we had to solve. So what we did is on the right, le right uh, bottom side corner, you see a cell. And this is what we changed to feeling it was the better way to do manufacturing. So a s human worker over here is working with this kind of uh, cell shaped uh, format right now. And he's working with the robots together in this uh, small cell. What the worker does, he does three things. He delivers the parts that are necessary for the product, product you make. And next, what he does is he uh, starts the machine. He reads the barcode and starts the machine. And the third one is he does the final inspection of the machine. So these three simple tasks. What it does is because um, he can feed the correct, he brings the parts to the machine. Uh, we don't need the feeder machines on the backside that we had. Um, we're doing the inspection, actually double checking, because in the past we had this issue where our test machine was uh, pro program wasn't working right now, and we actually he actually defined the test machine defined a correct part bad. So we decided, okay, let's do double checking just to make sure. The beautiful thing about this cell is, of course, it uses more people, but you know, we use six. We can use six different cells in the same space. And as you know, I think it's the same in Singapore, but space is so crucial in a small country like Japan. So we want every inch we can. With this, we were able to make six cells in the space of the one production line. The other beauty is we can make six different parts at the same time. So in the case of this whole enormous line, if you wanted to change over a plant, you'd have to wait till it processed all the parts right now, which was a waste of time. Now we can do six different parts at the same time make 60 of our products. And as you can imagine, one stoppage doesn't stop total production. So even if one cell in the right hand bottom corner stops, the other five are working. So I think, you know, people say automation is the best, robots are the best. But if you look at this kind of actual story and the fact that we found out that we, it was better to merge people back into the process, you know, I think people in robots in the right place would, is the more lean and flexible factory and the factory you should go forward to. You can see the output time compared to the past. You know, our productivity went out compared to the full automation line, our operation rate, you know, the number of processes went down. We're actually simplifying um, how we make the product because we can use a human between and we use less space. So um, a lot of people, they get excited about industry 4.0 and robotics, but I mean, it's not your goal. I mean, at the end, in production, I think most important is to be lean and flexible. And this is what I always tell our staff in the factory. You know, I don't care if you use robots. I don't care if you AI, be lean and flexible. Um, technology is changing so much right now. You look at the iPhones, I'm right now it's a flat phone, but next year you're going to see foldables. So does it really make sense to make the perfect line for a foldable when you're not going to make a, a, a straight line phone in two years right now. So I think that's why you have to think about the correct mix of using technology, people, and humans. Well, always think, you know, we're in manufacturing. So the ultimate goal is your bottom line and to make profit. So if you're going to use a huge amount of technology and money, and it costs a lot of money, and you're actually adding costs to your production line, then it's probably not a smart idea. I mean, the bottom line is what depends. And that's what, how, we, uh, how we approach IOT in our factory, always thinking of how we can reduce the total cost of ownership. Um, so uh, just some food for thought, uh, because we're also facing a crisis with COVID. Um, are you automating too much? I mean, we, we, of course, we try to automate as much as possible. We, we have a very, very small young population. So and, you know, replacing workers is vital. But if you automate too much, you lose a lot of things. Um, I have this funny story with my friend in Japan who works in an automotive factory. Um, for the machine in the past, they were, you know, making a checklist of the machine every day, writing down in the figures of how the machine was and was it ready to produce parts. Right now, 
So they did a project and they moved it to total automatic where the worker could see the values on the uh, GOT screen, HMI screen before him. They actually stopped doing it, you know, the visualization automation project, because they said, if I just show this on the screen, my workers stop thinking about how the machine is. In the past, they would go line by line saying, okay, the, how's the vibration? How is the uh, grease? And all those check. And they were thinking and feeling the machine and the status. By moving to automation, they're losing that thinking capability. So, And it's very important because a machine won't tell you um, how to think. If you look at the coronavirus crisis right now, can AI solve the problem? I think they never knew that the coronavirus is coming. So right now, what's being crucial to us in our factories also is the employees that can think out of the box right now and prov provide you know, the right input and in ways and phone calls with communication to make the factory running. So I think, you know, employees are always the key and the ability to think in the factory is going to lead you through these crises in the future. And even if you implement um, Industry 4.0, um, those are the key goals you should always be thinking of. So.